Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today is Unity release day. Yes, Unity 6 is here along with some other assets such as the Fantasy Kingdom demo they announced back at Unite as well as the Time Ghost HDRP, some of the assets from that showcase which you can see running right now as I babble on. So originally Unity 6 was shaping up to be probably the least popular release in the history of Unity for one simple reason. The Unity runtime fee. This was going to be the release where if you wanted to upgrade to Unity 6 or beyond, you had to agree to the idiotic runtime fee. Well, the good news is Unity has massively restructured since that uh, kerfluffle. We'll call it a kerfluffle. Uh, completely new management at the top, and they seem to have righted the ship. And one of the ways they righted the ship is to get rid of the idiotic runtime fee. So the good news is no runtime fee. So if you want to upgrade to Unity 6, you can upgrade to Unity 6. Now, there are a couple of changes that are coming into effect with this release. Uh, some pricing changes. Uh, one of the big things that's a positive is in the free tier, uh, you can now remove the splash screen, which hurrah. The, the idea of forcing a splash screen on your like least developed games always struck me as being incredibly stupid, but it's nice to see that that is finally gone. I know a lot of people used to upgrade to Plus specifically to get rid of that, which is a good thing because Plus is also gone. There's also one downside to this upgrade. I'm not going to hide it. Now with Unity 6, uh, it is going to require an internet connection uh, to authenticate every few days. I, I think they changed the amount of time it requires, but that is one of the negatives about Unity 6. So if you work offline for a very long period of time, this may not be the release for you. Now another important thing to understand with Unity 6 is we're going to have it for a very very, very long time because Unity 7 uh, has been announced and Unity 7 is going to have some massive breaking changes. They're going to be doing things like merging the uh, pipelines back into one. So no more standard pipeline ERP and HDRP. Instead, they will have one pipeline to rule them all. And that's going to obviously have a lot of breaking changes on people's projects. So Unity 6, they know people are going to be working on it for years to come. So uh, we are going to see quite a few updates with Unity 6. They're also changing the way they do do updates. So they're moving towards a faster iteration cycle, which I think is good. Uh, and they're going to name it, basically, uh, they're going to have major releases, like you see Unity 6, Unity 7, Unity 8. Those are going to come every like two or three years, probably. Uh, but they're also going to do um, minor patch releases. Now, these are releases like 6.0.1. Uh, these will have fixes and improvements, but no new functionality. So they shouldn't break anything. So if you're using 6, um, you should be able to just install one of these, and it should just be full of fixes. So even if you're working uh, in a production life cycle, you should be able to go ahead with these. In theory, you should also be able to use the new updates. Now, updates are going to be dot versions. So you have 6.1. 6.2. Now, these will have new functionality, uh, but they should be completely backward compatible with all six releases. So if, if you're using six and you upgrade to 6.1, all of your six stuff should continue to work. 6.1 will just have new features in it. 6.2, the same approach and so on. And then what you'll see is like 6.2.1 and dot one in that case will just be fixes and improvements and so on. So this is the new update cycle they are going with. If you're wondering about timelines here, uh, the first update has been announced. It should be in Unity 6.1, and it's scheduled for April of 2025. So uh, what is that, five months out? So it gives you an idea of, of the kind of release cycle that we're going to see here. Uh, also, I expect them to continue to update Unity 6 for several years uh, with new features, new patches, new everything, while Unity 7, like even after Unity 7 is released. So massive changes to the way they are doing their release schedule. All right, so what's actually new in Unity 6? Well, we're going to talk about some of the highlight new features that are in this particular release. Uh, the number one thing uh, everyone always loves is graphics. So let's start with the graphics stuff here. The big new things here are the G. GPU resident drawer, um, and I want to say drawer, uh, but the GPU resident drawer uh, enables you to transfer static objects from the CPU over to the GPU. On top of that, they also added GPU occlusion culling, which basically draws or doesn't draw things that aren't on screen. So that's what occlusion calling is all about. So basically, GPU side occlusion calling, if there is a polygon that's off screen, it isn't rendered. So the combination of these two things should cause you to just to get better performance. You should be able to turn these on and just basically get you know, 30% more frames per second. That's the theory behind them anyways. Um, 
obviously, if you're very CPU bound or your GPU is awful, uh, moving things over to the GPU isn't going to have a very profound effect, uh, but that's, that's a pretty big anomaly. So I think for the most part, these should just be free performance improvements. Another thing they've added is spa um, spatial temporal post-processing. Uh, this is an upscaling technology built directly inside of Unity. You can think of the likes of NVIDIA's DLSS or AMD's FSR. Basically, you render the frame at a lower resolution and then you upscale it to the device. So you could render at, say, 1080 and upscale it to 4K, that upscaling theoretically should look as good as the original as if you rendered it to 4K. It never does, but it looks pretty darn close. So they have their own upscaling solution called uh, STPP. Uh, and then on top of that, they also added adaptive probe volumes. So adaptive probe volumes uh, automate the placement of light probes. Um, they also enable some dynamic effects like time of day light changes. Uh, on top of that, we got some upgrades to the VFX graph. Uh, to, now this has feature parity between HDRP and uni the universal render pipeline or the ERP. Um, and that's actually really important because again, Unity 7, they're gonna be merged into a single entity again. So bringing to feature parity is pretty much a requirement. Uh, HDRP also now supports volumetric fog output, while URP now supports six-way lighting. Uh, HDRP also got some other improvements as well as things like atmosphere scattering, ozone simulations, improvements to the water. We got some skin and hair stuff in there as well. Uh, they also added a ray tracing API specifically for Windows and then current gen uh, Xbox and PS5 console hardware. I got some improvements on the multiplayer side of things. By far the coolest new feature there uh, has got to be the multiplayer play mode. Uh, this enables you to launch uh, four instances of your game locally. So basically you can have uh, and run four copies of your game on your local PC as if they were all networked. It's going to be obviously hard to play four copies of your game at the same time, but you can see if they communicate, you don't need to have multiple different machines. Just a, a rapid time saver from doing multiplayer testing, especially if you're doing things like handshaking, synchronization testing, that kind of stuff. So uh, that is going to be a nice new feature. That's the multiplayer play mode. Uh, they also have the multiplayer center, uh, which is kind of a hub for all of the multiplayer stuff you can add. They're trying to make it easier to add multiplayer player services to your Unity game. Obviously, it's their services. Uh, they also added um, multiplayer widgets. Uh, these are a collection of templates for things like lobbies, connections, and voice chat implementation. So if you want to get those things up and running rapidly, you can use these templates to do so. Uh, they also added something called distributed authority. This is in beta form, and this is a basically a cloud service for cheap networking. Uh, this implements using uh, netcode for game objects. So if you want to move beyond client hosting and you want to move it into the cloud, Cloud. Uh, this distributed authority beta should make that an easier process for you. On the platform side of things, we got some uh, love here as well. Oddly, I didn't see mention in the in the release notes about GPU, web GPU, but we did get uh, mentions here about um, you can now run it in mobile browsers. Uh, so you can run your Unity web games inside of the browser for like um, you know Safari on an iPad or on an iPhone or in the Android, like in the Chrome browser on mobile platforms. So they're officially supporting mobile browsers now which should open up web games to a large new audience. On top of that, we've got the improvement of uh, WebAssembly SIMD support. So, so this should give you improved CPU performance. Also, the WebAssembly RAM limits were increased. Uh, so previously, WebAssembly uh, was limited to two gigabytes of memory usage. Now it is up to four gigabytes. So that should open up some new possibilities. Uh, on the platform side of things, they also added some new tooling. So they've got the new build profiles and the platform browser dialogs. So these make it easier to set up for multiple different uh, platforms, but it also enables you the build profiles. You can create multiple different build profiles for any different platform, uh, so each with their own build settings and data and so on. You can also share them across your teams. So it should make supporting multiple build platforms an easier process. And then we have a couple of just miscellaneous improvements here as well. So a new profiler uh, highlights module that shows optimizations focus on uh, focus areas for CPU and GPU. We also have uh, improvements to the memory profile so you can see uh, memory resident usage with the new detailed breakdown of graphic memory usage. So it should be a little bit easier to just figure out how your game is performing, finding any performance bottlenecks and so on. And that really is the highlight features of Unity 7. Also do keep in mind the Fantasy Kingdom stuff was released today. Some new training material was released today as well. And some of the assets from the Time Ghost demonstration are also now available. Uh, they also have the Mega City multiplayer sample, but I think that's been available for a while, but that's been added as well, and some new training material, etc. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is Unity 6 
in about 10 minutes time, uh, nine and a half at this point. Uh, so yeah, what do you think? Are, are you willing to go with Unity 6 now that you know they've got new management, the management seem to be making good decisions, the runtime fee is out the window, um, it's, you know, obviously some people are reticent because they're still a publicly traded company and they could do the same things all over again. But the people in charge do seem to be making the right calls. And this is Unity 6 on a straight technical level. What do you think of this particular release? Is there anything in there that you're really excited for? Are you excited for Unity 7? Let me know in the comments down below and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.